Good morning, Commissioners, Fire morning. Chief Terraza, City Attorney, Ms. Iniguez, Eric Scott, Captain and Public Information Officer. Uh, today we have an excellent uh, presentation and we're honored to recognize the members from Fire Station 69 in the Pacific Palisades area for providing life-saving measures to a 47-year-old male that was just having a routine day at work but ended up in a very lethal heart rhythm. And at this point, we'd like to invite up these members, a firefighter paramedics, Robert Miller and Octavio Severa to join us at the platform, firefighters Daniel Garcia and Douglas Peterman, and engineer Timothy Tognieri. And the incident that took place was actually pretty recent. It was on January 21st. Again, it was a routine day for Mr. Bell. He's a 47-year-old. He used to work with LAPD for 10 years, and now as a screenwriter, he was at work in his office building on the second story when he started to have some severe chest pain. Fortunately, uh, he did quickly call 911, even though he doesn't remember it to this day. And Fire Station 69 is just two blocks away. So they very quickly responded. Uh, these members behind me recognized the patient's level of severity. They immediately provided advanced life support care. And they also uh, utilized a stair chair to bring him down to the ambulance so he didn't have to walk and further exasperate his cardiac condition. And then um, really, it was, as they were driving to the hospital with lights and sirens is where things took a change for the worse. And he suddenly became unconscious, and he went into a very lethal uh, heart rhythm. And this will kind of show you what happens to the heart as it goes into what's called ventricular tachycardia and also ventricular fibrillation, where it does not perfuse appropriately. So what had happened is these medics yelled to the driver up front, immediately pull over. They were near an intersection. The engine pulled behind them. They blocked uh, the traffic to create a safe environment, and they provided electrical shock to that, to that quivering heart. They defibrillated the patient several times, I believe 13 times. Ultimately, uh, they, they shocked the individual, provided CPR, and rushed off to the emergency room. Uh, fortunately, shortly after the patient's arrival, uh, he did get a return of spontaneous circulation. So that quivering heart began to beat again. Um, and the members there at the ER stated that if it were not for the, for the actions by, by these members behind me, that that patient would not have survived. So the following actions are what were really instrumental to having a successful outcome. They had an accurate dispatch, like Dr. Eckstein was mentioning from our dispatchers. There was early recognition that we did in fact have a critical patient, even though he was conscious to begin with. There's immediate application of advanced life support care, and they enacted the proper treatment protocols. They selected the appropriate hospital destination for that, uh, what's a STEMI center to handle that type of a cardiac event. And of course, it was really because of the outstanding work of these members that we had uh, a positive outcome and certainly that is worthy of recognition. <laughs> but it's not over yet. <laughs> As a surprise actually we do have the cardiac arrest survivor Mr. Will Bell and his wife Elizabeth Bell that is here to reunite with these members and uh, briefly make a couple statements. This is another amazing uh, story. Uh, Dr. Eckstein described two similar stories, and then Captain Scott uh, reiterated the, the chain of survival. And at every step, everything went right. Uh, Will made the call. He doesn't remember it, but he made the call. The dispatcher took the call. They immediately dispatched within 48 seconds and then started doing um, um, CPR instructions. Simultaneously, engine and rescue 69 are being dispatched and they were luckily just a few blocks away, so I imagine they got on scene within just a couple of minutes. And then they immediately do what we do. They recognize the situation, continue CPR, uh, rapidly loaded him into the hospital, and transported him to a STEMI center. 
And because all, all the various elements of the chain of survival were done in a rapid and effective manner, Will is here today to share his story. And before I walked in here, I met Will and Elizabeth, and uh, they asked how could they say, uh, show their thanks to the men and women of our department for what uh, they had experienced. And I told them, it's thanks enough just to be here and allow us to tell their story. Uh, we don't always have a successful outcome. As Dr. Eckstein shared with us, the five-year-old little boy who died from asthma, and unfortunately, we encounter more of those than we do the success stories. So this is a success story. It's inspirational for the men and women of our department. And it makes me very, very proud that our system is working and it's getting better all the time. So I want to add my congratulations to the members of Fire Station 69 and thank uh, Will for allowing us to tell his story. With that, I'd like to turn the mic over to Will for his personal comments. Congratulations, Will. Glad, to, glad that you're here. Uh, I wrote something. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am incident number 965, 47-year-old male experiencing severe chest pains. And I suppose it goes without saying that if you hadn't shown up when you did, I would be dead. In fact, I think I was dead at some point. My heart stopped anyway, but you didn't let that stop you. You didn't give up on me. Continued your work all the way to the hospital. And because of you, my three children still have a father. In fact, just a few uh, weeks later, my daughter's kindergarten class had their field trip to Station 69, my wife chaperoned. And she told me by then the worst and most miraculous thing that's ever happened to me was already just a couple notes scribbled in a captain's logbook, top of the page, right before the fallen tree blocking Rivas Canyon Road. Incident number 965, just another tragedy averted, another total stranger who owes you his life. I suppose that's the job, to enter the stage at the darkest hour, show up at the worst moment in somebody's life and do everything, risk everything to help people you've never seen before and will never see again. And so I thank you for saving my life. And now if you'll forgive me, I'm also going to take this moment and presume to speak for the hundreds, maybe thousands of people like me that you encounter over the course of your career, who may never get a chance to say it, because not all of us make it. But we would like to say thank you. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your compassion. And thank you for choosing this noble profession. wasn't prepared for any speech or anything, but uh, some, some patients make it easy on you. Uh, we walked in to see Mr. Bell at, uh, a little sweaty after our workout and uh, kind of looked like a, just a routine chest pain will run to the hospital. Once we looked at the EKG and uh, noticed a STEMI, basically everything was bumped up from then. When you work with guys like this, everybody just did their job. They knew exactly what to do, what we needed, and it, and it went along very, very easily. So we just thank you for being the patient that you were and all the help that we get from our uh, coworkers. Thank you. Great. Thank you.